pray. Now, Father, we thank you for your word this morning, for it strengthening, renewing, and transforming in the name of Jesus, that we would not just be hearers of this word, but that we would be doers of the word of God, that our foundation be built on the rock, so when the storms of life come, that our house would not fall. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, a thought came to me, was today Sunday, so a thought came to me probably around Thursday of this week, and that I, I believe I was talking, it was out of a conversation I had with my daughter, and how many of you know that we're all gifted in different areas of our life? Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? We're gifted in all areas of our, our life. So, Mike, Elder Mike is a beautiful, you know, he sing, he can dance. Some of you, you teach, you sing, you dance, flag, all different types of things. Gifts of administration. But the thought that came to me, how, how awesome it is, because see, people used to say, oh, it would be such a, it's so awesome if Michael Jackson got saved, if Prince got saved, and all oh, Beyonce, all these people got saved and really served God. Not just a confession, but really wholeheartedly served God. So this is the thought, write it down. How beautiful it is to have that gift, but the anointing on it. Amen. Yes, yes. We don't want just gifts, but we want the anointing. The presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit on that gift. There's a lot of people in the world that sing secular music, but they're not necessarily anointed by God. In the Old Testament, the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. It destroys it. Not just broken, where it can be put back together, but destroys the yoke. Something that is destroyed can't be put back together again. So that tells me that the enemy has to come another way. <laughs> oh, God. If I destroy the World Trade Center like they did, they did in September, what, 2001? They destroyed it. That thing didn't resurrect, did it? Do you see the Twin Towers resurrected? No, you don't. But what you do see is the Liberty Center. You see a new building that has been erected. Amen? So that's why you want the anointing Amen. on your gift. Because when you're a minister, we're all ministers of righteousness. And even though some of us, we don't necessarily know the, the, the office that we stand in yet, we're still learning that. God has called all of us to be ministers of reconciliation, to do the work of evangelists. So he said, if you've received my son Jesus Christ, right, you're a believer. He expects you to pick up your cross daily and follow him. He expects you to share your faith with another believer. To say, I haven't always been like this, but let me tell you about the Son of God. Let me tell you how he brought me out and brought me in. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we're all called, say we're all called, we're all called. to be ministers be of reconciliation. reconciliation. Wherever you go, let your light shine. Yes. Wherever you go, tell them have you overcome by the blood of the Lamb yes. and the word of your testimony. I don't know what to say when I minister, when I go out in the street. That's what you may say. But tell them how you brought, he brought you out of darkness. Amen. Tell them how he healed you. Tell them how he filled you with the Holy Ghost. That's your testimony. You've overcome by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen? So in 1 Corinthians 12, there's a lot of gifts that are talked about. Verse 27 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ. Say, I am the body of Christ. And members individually. So if we were to stand up and make a human body, we could form from the people that are in here a body. You are the body of Christ. But you are members individually. Every fingerprint, everyone hold up their hand. Yes. Every hand lifted in this building from the oldest Mother Morton to baby George on the floor over there. You have a unique fingerprint. Amen. Amen. You're not like any other, excuse me, creature right. on this planet. Amen. Amen. You're unique, individually members, but brought together in the body of Christ to be from an individual to be a part of something magnificent, to be a part of something oh so glorious. 
He wants his body to arise and do the work of God. Amen. For you to know exactly what you're called to do is, is not cute. Right. To be like, well, I don't know what I'm called to do. It's okay to know what office you stand in. It's okay. Amen? Amen. Now, are we all prophets? No, we're not. We can all prophesy. Let's, let's get that straight. Are we all apostles? No, we're not. But we can all do works like apostles do. God, the sent one. We can be sent sometimes to do a work. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, are all prophets? No, not all are apostles, not all are prophets. Amen? Amen. But it says in verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. I love being an individual, but I love being joined with the body. Because I realized in John 15 that he said, I can do nothing if I, if I disconnect from the vine. So that also tells me that I can't be an island to myself. I need my brother and sisters in Christ Jesus. When believers get together and pray, it's powerful. Amen. Where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. Amen. Amen. And two are better than one, and a three-chord fold is not easily broken. Yes. Two are better than one. There's agreement. There's power. You need the strength. So if I have my husband, if I'm down, he can lift me up. If he's down, I can lift him up. And then the Holy Ghost is over, empowered both of us. Yes. Amen? Amen? Verse 28, and, and God has appointed these in the church. God has appointed these in the church. God has appointed these in the church. Amen. God. So don't get mad because someone's a pastor, someone's a prophet, someone's evangelist. God has appointed these in the church. In the council of his own will. We may not like it. We don't, why did he call her? Why did he call him? And God has called. God has done it. God has fingered. Amen? First apostles, the sent one. I say right here. That's the apostle. Without this thumb, I can, my, I'm going to be very limited. Right? Cut off your thumb. You can be very limited. You won't be able to grab. Right? Yes. Secondarily, prophets, the pointer finger, the seer, those who say and th those who see and say. Amen? Amen. Third, teachers. How can anything be established and grounded if you have not a teacher? People sometimes when I get up there, oh, she preaches, she's the fire. And that's awesome. But I have to teach the word of God too. Because if I keep you up here inspired and not teach the word of God, you have no foundation. Your roots can be easily unplucked. Remember a, a tree. So it's not always about preaching, preaching, preaching. If you're a pastor, you're definitely called to teach as well. If this has no roots, I'll be able to pick this up and just fling it somewhere. But when you're taught the word of God, you hear it and you do it, your foundation is firm. One time I brought in a wilted uh, plant because it had been uprooted. If you keep taking a plant, imagine those who do gardening and uprooting something and uprooting to Eugene's backyard, Stephanie's backyard, uh, Luciano's backyard. Is it going to grow? No, because it has to get it has to get get roots. Third teachers, a th after that miracles, then gifts of healing. Pastor Rich has that. Helps many of us have that in the house. Administrations, elder vow, variety of tongues. Amen. Are all apostles? No. Okay. Are all prophets? So let's stop saying we're all prophets. We're all, we're not. We all don't sit in the the office of a prophet. We can all have the spirit of prophecy and the gift of prophecy, but we're not all called to be prophets. Amen. That's, in, that's important because it can, if someone who's really called to the office of prophet, it can, how can I say it, um, belittle the office if we think that we're all prophets, right? Are all prophets, are all are prophets, are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret, but earnestly desire the best gifts? And yet I show you a more excellent way. So though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. So all these gifts, you know, apostolically, prophetically, teaching the word of God, healings, helps, administrations, all these gifts, all this noise, looking powerful, sounding powerful, come on accolades, pats on the back, but have not love. It's amazing. 
that it goes in chapter 12, running down into chapter 13, the love chapter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. Doing all these gifts, standing in all these offices, but have not love. That To me, that's the best gift. Yes. That he put in my heart, shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. The gift of faith, preaching the word of faith. The voice of faith, like I preached last week, pouring out of people's mouths to encourage, to strengthen. It immediately strengthens the hearer. Yes. Having the gift of faith. And you see the manifestation of what people said God would give them and what they believe for. But have not love. Have the faith to move mountains, but have not love. Love is going to ground us. Amen. Love will ground you. Amen. 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 Verse 3. And though I bestow all my bodies to, to my, my bestow all my goods to feed the poor, do gooders. Come on, on the job and secular, all of you here, people on your job every day. They have the food drives. Let's go to the, the home in Trenton and everyone in the companies putting cans together. Do gooders. I'm a good person. For your righteousness is like filthy rags. Filthy rags, shaking it before God. I gave $50 to the cancer center. Uh, I gave $100 to the homeless. Uh, I allowed someone to live in my home for six months. Good daughters, good works, but not covered by the blood of Jesus. Not redeemed. Not shifted into the kingdom of God. It stinks before God. Your righteousness, this flesh, is corruptible and it will die. Amen. So you got to be covered by the blood of Jesus. You got to receive his son. Not just being forgiven, you got to receive his son. You got to know why you're being forgiven. You're being forgiven because he died on the cross. And he was raised from the dead. And you receive the sacrifice that has been ordained by God. He didn't tell Buddha to die. He wasn't on the cross. We weren't on the cross. Confucius was not on the cross. His son was on the cross. So saying no to him and saying, I don't receive your sacrifice. I don't receive the way back to you. Jesus is the way back. He's the repairer of the breach. Amen. 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 The gap, the gulf between us and Adam, us and God because of the sin of Adam and Eve. His body was laid down and bruised and marred than any other man. The bridge back to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Verse 3, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Hey, people do all these things in different nations. <laughs> Believe it or not, it sounds kooky to us, but they do all these things. Burning their body to be accepted by God. Oh Let me feed the poor. Let me burn my body. He said, you ain't got to do all that. I took every pain, every bruise, all sickness, all disease, every infirmity was paid. The price was paid. The Jehovah Witnesses are out there witnessing. You want to know why? Because they don't believe that the blood of Jesus paid the price. They believe they have to do good or earn it works to get into the kingdom. That there are anointed 144,000 that are chosen by God. But you and I and all the rest of us who are outside of the chosen, outside of what they call the remnant, you got to do works to get into the kingdom. But God said, my, if you receive just my son, he's paid the price. He is the sacrifice. Yes, Lord. But have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long. Ooh. And is kind, Jesus. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, it is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. It is not provoked, thanks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity when they get theirs. Come on. When they get theirs, does not rejoice. Pastor Rich taught us that so beautifully. Lest God change his mind. But rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things. Oh, I know she did that. I know he's like that. God said to me one time, believes all things. Love believes all things. You believe the best in people. 
Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Amen. No one's a know-it-all. Right. Yes. <laughs> but when that which is per perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Amen? Yes. Amen. Go to verse 13 as we close. And now abide in faith. And now abide in faith, hope, and love. Abide, remain, dwell in faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. It's charity. It's love. Amen? Amen? So how about that great gift that you have, but the anointing and the presence of God on it? Yes. Awesome, right? Yes. Because that's when the yokes are destroyed. Yes. Broken, destroyed, destroyed. Not broken, but destroyed. And I believe that's what God gave me. Yes. If you think about 9-11 and those towers, they, they're, they're never to be rebuilt again. Because they were destroyed. And think about the anointing when you minister, that's what you want flowing through you. The anointing destroys that yoke. And you'll see that there are chains and fetters and mindsets. When you teach the word and release it out of your mouth, mindsets are transformed. Oh, I didn't know that was in the word of God. Because you release the word and their mind has been transformed not to this world, not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of their mind because the word of God was taught. Amen? So you want the anointing, how sweet it is, how powerful it is, and then the love of God. An umbrella over it all, the love of God. Over it all from end to end. We mess up. We make wrong choices. But we are people that get up again. We learn from our mistakes. Life is your teacher. Where you have fallen, where you have done wrong, where you have betrayed. When you made wrong choices, let life be your teacher and learn. Do it not again. Jesus said, go sin, sin no more. Amen. Let's clap our hands and thank God.